Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Daniel here with another video, continuing our look at the A to Z of aircraft of the Second World War. Today we are looking at the letter G, and for this letter we are looking at the Grumman F4F Wildcat. The Grumman F-4F Wildcat was an American carrier-based fighter aircraft that entered service in 1940 with the US Navy and the British Royal Navy, in whose service it was known as the Martlet. First used by the British in the North Atlantic, the Wildcat was the only effective fighter available to the United States Navy and the US Marine Corps in the Pacific Theatre during the early years of the Second World War. Grumman fighter development began with the two-seat Grumman FF biplane. The FF was the first US naval fighter with a retractable landing gear. The wheels of the FF retracted into the fuselage, leaving the tyres visibly exposed, flush with the sides of the fuselage. Two single-seat biplane designs followed, the F2F and F3F, which established the general fuselage outlines of what would become the F4F Wildcat. In 1935, while the F-3F was still undergoing flight testing, Grumman started work on its next biplane fighter, the G-16. At the time, the US Navy favoured a monoplane design, the Brewster F-2A Buffalo, ordering production in early 1936. However, an order was also placed for Grumman's G-16, which was given the Navy designation X-F-4F-1, in case the Brewster monoplane proved to be unsatisfactory. It was clear to Grumman that the XF4F1 would be inferior to the Brewster monoplane, so Grumman abandoned the XF4F1, designing instead a new monoplane fighter, the XF4F2. The XF4F2 would retain the same fuselage mounted, hand cranked main landing gear as the F3F with a relatively narrow track. The unusual manually retractable main landing gear design for all Grumman's US Navy fighters up to and through to the F4F. The overall performance of Grumman's new monoplane was felt to be inferior to that of the Brewster Buffalo. The XF4F2 was marginally faster, but the Buffalo was more manoeuvrable. The Buffalo was judged to be superior and was chosen for production. Following losing out to Brewster, Grumman completely rebuilt the prototype as the XF4F3 with new wings and tail and a supercharged version of the Pratt & Whitney r 1830 Twin Wasp radial engine. Testing of the new XF4F3 led to an order for F4F3 production models, the first of which was completed in February 1940. France also ordered the type powered by a Wright R1820 cyclone radial engine, but France fell to the Axis powers before they could be delivered and the aircraft instead were taken over by the Royal Navy, who christened the new fighter the Martlet. The US Navy officially adopted the aircraft type on the 1st of October 1941 as the Wildcat. The Royal Navy and the US Navy's F4Fs were armed with four 0.5 inch or 12.7 mm Browning machine guns and joined active service units in 1940. The F4F, which was initially known in British service as the Martlet, was originally taken on by the Royal Navy's fleet air arm as an interim replacement for the Fairy Former. The former was a two-seat fighter with a good range but operated at a performance disadvantage against single-seat fighters. Navalised versions of the Supermarine Spitfire, which would be known as the Seafire, were not available because of the greater need of the Royal Air Force. In the European theatre, the first combat victory of the F-4F occurred on Christmas Day 1940 when a land-based martlet destroyed a Junkers Ju-88 bomber over the Royal Navy's home fleet naval base of Scarpa Flu. This was the first combat victory of a US-built fighter in British service during the Second World War. The type also pioneered combat operations from the smaller escort carriers. Six Grumman Martlets went to sea aboard a converted German merchant vessel, which had been rechristened HMS Audacity in September 1941, and shot down several Luftwaffe FW-200 Condor bombers during highly effective convoy escort operations. The Martlets, operating from HMS Audacity, were the first of many Grumman F-4F aircraft to engage in aerial combat at sea. 
Nearly 1,200 wildcats would be flown by the Fleet Air Arm, and by January 1944, the Martlet name was dropped and the type was identified as the Wildcat. In March 1945, Wildcats shot down four Messerschmitt Bf 109s over Norway, making them the Fleet Air Arm's last Wildcat victories. The last air raid of the war in Europe was carried out by the Fleet Air Arm aircraft in Operation Judgment, conducted on the 5th of May 1945. In this, 28 Wildcat aircraft from 846, 853 and 882 Naval Air Squadrons, flying from escort carriers, took part in the attack on a U-boat depot near Harstad, Norway. During Operation Judgment, two ships and a U-boat were sunk with the loss of one Wildcat and one Grumman Avenger torpedo bomber. In service with the US Navy and US Marine Corps, the Grumman F4F Wildcat first saw service against the Japanese. In the Pacific, the Wildcat was generally outperformed by the Mitsubishi Zero, its major opponent in the early years of the war in the Pacific. With a top speed of 318 miles per hour, the Wildcat was outperformed by the faster and more manoeuvrable and longer range Zero, which could attain a top speed of 331 miles per hour. Nevertheless, the Wildcat held its own, partly because with relatively heavy armour and self-sealing fuel tanks, the Grumman airframe could survive far more damage than its lightweight unarmoured Japanese rival. Many US Navy fighter pilots were saved by the Wildcat's ZB homing device, which allowed them to find their carriers in poor visibility, provided that they could get within 30 miles of the homing beacon. However, the ZB, or Zed Baker, was wildly inconsistent in practice, especially during the Battle of Midway, when an entire squadron of Wildcats crashed into the sea after failing to locate their carriers. Four Wildcats of the US Marine Corps played a prominent role in the defence of Wake Island in December 1941. US Navy and US Marine Corps aircraft formed the fleet's primary air defence during the Battle of the Coral Sea and the Battle of Midway while land-based Wildcats played a major role during the Guadalcanal campaign of 1942-43. US Navy pilots, including John Jimmy Thatch, a pioneer of fighter tactics to deal with the Mitsubishi Zero, were greatly dissatisfied with the Wildcats' inferior performance against the Zero during the battles of the Coral Sea and Midway. In order to effectively deal with the Japanese Zeros, Thatch devised a defensive tactic that allowed Wildcat formations to act in a coordinated manoeuvre to counter a diving attack, called the Thatch Reef. On occasion, Wildcat suffered heavy losses against the Japanese. For instance, on the 2nd of October 1942, during the Guadalcanal campaign, a Japanese air raid from Rabaul was not detected in time to allow the Wildcats of the Cactus Air Force to scramble and gain altitude. The result was the loss of six Wildcats to only one Zero destroyed. During the most intense initial phase of the Guadalcanal campaign, between the 1st of August and the 15th of November 1942, combat records indicate that the US lost 115 Wildcats, while the Japanese lost 106 Zeros to all causes. It may be noted, however, that the Japanese lost many more pilots when compared to the United States. Indeed, while Wildcats on occasion suffered heavy losses against the Japanese, it has been claimed that Wildcats had a claimed air combat kill to loss ratio of 5.9 to 1 in 1942 and 6.9 to 1 for the entire war. Grumman's production of the F4F ceased in early 1943 to make way for the newer F6F Hellcat. Lessons learned from the Wildcat were later applied to the faster F6F Hellcat. While the Wildcat had a better range and manoeuvrability at lower speed, the Hellcat could rely on superior power and high speed performance to outperform the Zero. While Grumman halted production of the Wildcat in early 1943, General Motors continued to produce the Wildcat for the US Navy and the Royal Navy. First, General Motors produced the FM-1, which was identical to the F4F-4 with four machine guns. Production was later switched to the improved FM-2, which was based on Grumman's XF4F8 prototype, informally known as the Wilder Wildcat, which was optimised for small carrier operations and it could count on a more powerful engine and a taller tail to cope with the increased torque. From 1943, Wildcats equipped with bomb racks were primarily assigned to escort carriers for use against submarines and attacking ground targets, though they would also continue to score kills against Japanese fighters, bombers and kamikaze aircraft. Larger fighters, such as the Hellcat and the Corsair, along with dive bombers, were needed aboard the fleet carriers, while the Wildcat's slower landing speed made it more suitable for shorter flight decks. 
US Navy Wildcats participated in Operation Torch. US Navy escort carriers in the Atlantic used Wildcats until the end of the war, with October 1943 seeing F4Fs of the US Navy participating in Operation Leader, an anti-shipping strike on Norway. During the Battle of Samar on the 25th of October 1944, escort carriers of Task Unit 77.4.3, known as Taffy 3, and their escort of destroyers and destroyer escorts found themselves as the sole force standing between vulnerable troop transports and supply ships engaged in the landings on the Philippine island of Leyte and a powerful Japanese surface fleet of battleships and cruisers. In desperation, lightly armed Avengers and FM-2 Wildcats from Taffy's 1, 2 and 3 resorted to tactics such as strafing ships including the bridge of the Japanese battleship Yamato while the destroyers and destroyer escorts charged the enemy. Confused by the fierce resistance and having suffered significant damage, the Japanese fleet eventually withdrew from the battle. In all, 7,860 Grumman F4F Wildcats would be constructed. During the course of the war, US Navy and US Marine Corps F4Fs and FMs flew 15,553 combat sorties, 14,027 of these being conducted from aircraft carriers. In this, they destroyed a claimed figure of 1,327 enemy aircraft at a cost of 178 aerial losses. 24 of these losses were to ground or shipboard fire and 14 to operational courses. This gave the Wildcat an overall claimed kill-to-loss ratio of 6.9 to 1 for the Second World War. Due to their escort fighter rule, Wildcats dropped only 154 tonnes of bombs during the Second World War. Today, 44 Wildcats exist in the United States, United Kingdom and in the Solomon Islands. Of this number, 18 are airworthy. Of the 18 airworthy aircraft, two are located in the United Kingdom, with the remainder being located in the United States. Of the remainder, 23 Wildcats are on display, while three are under restoration. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more updates, like and share. You can also help to support the channel at Patreon. Details are in the description box below.